And so speaking of obviously talking about social media and its use, you, again, do this probably better than anyone that I certainly know. Um, and you, you have a successful blog. You have a blog. In 2022, you have a blog that gets decent traffic. That, that's, that's not very common in, in, in this modern age. Uh, so one thing I want to discuss for the audience basically is how do you do that? Like how have you kind of constructed social media and what are, what do you find like the best practices, like, like, like as far as like frequency of posts, um, interactions, things like that? That's, that's a really good question. So I think for me over many years of figuring out social media, it's this idea of what works for me and okay. what works for me doesn't necessarily work for others. And I think about, okay, what types of social media do I enjoy doing? And what types do I find engaging? And then what do other people find engaging? And kind of trying to find this sweet spot into something that suits me and suits others and can still, you know, attract uh, attract attention. So you mentioned the blog. I have a blog, but I also have a day job. And the, the shtick behind that is this idea, okay, how do creative people both do their craft and make money? Because often those are two things that are very separated. You know, the idea, I go to my day job during the day, I come back in the evening, and then I work on my writing, my art, my music, my acting, you know, and right. so on. And having, having to balance this. And this was something that had kind of fascinated me um, around the time I was leaving grad school, where, you know, there was one academic path that we were very much being groomed for, the idea that you, you know, get a professor job, you teach, you know, you write, um, and then you make your money that way uh, through the professor's salary. And I was interested in, you know, seeing how other kinds of pr creative professionals did it, not just writers, but, you know, musicians who, you know, maybe had to wait tables or something like that. And, um, and chronicling my own struggles with this and my own sort of mental battles with this and how I was making it work um, was something that one, it was illuminating for me. And I learned a lot about my own process, but then two other people found it interesting as well, you know, seeing both what I was doing and then, you know, how I was handling um, these kinds of bigger issues. You know, I started doing interviews where I would talk to different kinds of people. I would do things like, you know, like uh, review books that are, uh, that were uh, relevant to the creative life, you know, um, different resources that I found and kind of spreading this, um, and so it, over time, it became this sort of amalgamation of all these different day job related um, related things that I found interesting and other people found them interesting, too. So, you know, you get people who would you know follow the blog every week and so on. Um, and then also, you know, searching uh, Google type hits, you know, people just find stuff. You know, it's mm -hmm. like some of the entries are more popular than others um, in this respect, you know, um, and so people find it that way. And it's not a chore for me to blog. You know, I enjoy blogging. It's very easy for me to do. Um, it's something that doesn't take up a lot of time, but also occupies my mental energy in an interesting way, especially if I'm yeah. just thinking about a topic um, that isn't necessarily, you know, a story or a book or something, but it's maybe something that I want to reflect on a little bit further to try to understand. Yeah. It's and, how I do that. And I like what you said about the blog being nothing to do with writing per se, right? Because I think people that, that when they start thinking about social media, they, they start thinking, and I was the same way, of, uh, okay, how do I, like, how do I tweet about writing? How do I yeah. do a channel about writing, basically, right? And what you've done is day jobs. You've taken something that has nothing to do specifically with writing. It's a completely separate idea. It could be a separate hobby, perhaps. Something that is of interest, general interest, but has nothing, but is so broad an application for a topic that, doesn't have to be writing per se. That way, you're not just going to, you know, kind of narrow the niche. But also, it, it gives you freedom, right? Talking about writing all day is not always the most exciting thing. And I'm, I'm saying it's the guy who has a YouTube <laughs> channel basically dedicated to just writing every day. I, I, I'm sort of, I, I think, the exception to that rule because I do think that people that have blogs or channels that are different from that in some sense tend to get more people, right? Like, like, like yeah. my channel gets people that are writers. You can get people, as you said, like that are artists, that, that are people that are, that are trying to do this hustle culture where they're trying to build their own business and, and have a day job at the same time. People that people that just work day jobs nine to five and have a soul-sucking experience and they want to just vet and see, you know what I mean, how to yeah. do that. <laughs> All of the um, Yeah. Yeah, you, um, again, you make a really, really good point in that um, writing, blogging about writing no one wants to read that really, you know, if, if done, if done poorly, no one wants to read it. I think, you know, if people think, you know, I'm a fiction writer and I'm working on a story about, you know, 
a magical story about a girl who finds an enchanted kingdom and you know she has these um, she has animal friends and so on mm -hmm. or, or whatever and so how do you turn that into a blog you know it's like it, it's in the fictional realm there's magic you know maybe it's young adult you know how do you how do you do that the subject matter often does not lends itself to Thank blogging you. and reflection i think if you're going to blog about writing issues it's perfectly po possible to do that you know um yeah. either you know style choices you know you write about you know tone or about um the writing process you know drafting i think a lot of writers will talk about that um uh, a lot of writers will uh, will focus on word counts which i think is often a little bit um maybe yeah. focusing on the wrong thing and like oh i wrote 800 words today i wrote 3,000 words today or, or whatever yeah. um and some well no okay okay not not to yeah to, to poke no fun, I, I, it's... I yeah I was gonna say I, I I continually rant on my thing about not focusing on word count like I, I like so many of my videos go into just my philosophy which is don't care about word count because the guy who writes two thousand words in a day maybe two hundred fifty of those words are decent words that are gonna stay you're gonna throw the rest out like if you would have done yeah. you know five hundred words in a day. And made those really carefully considered words, like so two two double space pages that were carefully considered that you wrote down, you know, even first draft, like you put some cost effort into, and you took those same three hours that you worked for like two thousand words into five hundred words. Your story at the end, it might take longer to finish. It will be of a better quality. Yes. Like so, I I I ran against that all the time. But yeah, I think the word count. And again, you don't do this, but some of the writers I see where you know word count it can be construed as kind of a bragging or a chest puffing. You know, it's it's about getting yeah. that high number it in is. some way, and it's um because that emphasis is just on the number and not on the quality of the words. You know, I think it's it's really not worth anything. You know, you like um. I, you know, I read somewhere that John Banville would take hours and hours to write a single sentence. And it'd be a yeah. damn, you know, damn good sentence because John Banville's a very good writer. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if he were to have his word count for the day, you know, it's going to be 38 or whatever, you know, so a cartoonishly small number. He's not going to have to go back and revise. And so if you're going to quantify your writing abilities or, you know, how, how much progress you made that day, I think word count is a very poor way to do it. I, I think about days where, you know, I'll write either very little or none at all, but in my mind, I'll solve a very specific problem that I've maybe been grappling with and I've got it, you know, it's like that solving that problem and knowing how to proceed is more valuable than a 5,000 word day, you know, it really, really is. Clarity over, over just making a long, it, it, it's like exactly right. It, 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 it's like driving in the fog, right? Like if you have clarity or like yes. you drive, you know, five miles straight or you're caught in the fog or whatever and you have to, you know, take a detour here and go all the way around. Yeah, you, you spent more miles, but you're getting to the same place at the very end anyways, hopefully. But the clarity basically got you there on a shorter distance in the long term, you know? Um, but to go back to your, your original yeah. question about marketing, I think, you know, like, Blogging works for me. It might not work for everybody. You know, it's um, a lot of the advice I see is, um, you know, blogging works very well for nonfiction people, nonfiction writers, because you can write about your topic, so to speak. You know, you're mm -hmm. writing a book about, you know, hiking, so you can blog about hiking. You're make, writing a book about furniture repair, so you blog about furniture repair and so on. Um, I think most writers are going to have more success with, you know, Twitter, Instagram, you know, even TikTok, YouTube, you know, um, Facebook. I, a lot of writers use Facebook still. Um, the idea that you can pick a platform that you like and that feels comfortable to you and maybe find things that are interesting to post, to share, to reflect on, you know, um, the posts that have value in themselves and that people find interesting for some reason and aren't just advertisements for your book or kind of, you know, the yeah. same old, the same old stuff, you know, because people are smart. They can tell when something's being recycled or if it's just an advertisement for them, you know? No, absolutely. And, and that's, that, that's the one thing, I, I guess, like the general consumer thing, exactly right, is people today, especially the youth, like people, I mean, I don't know why. Don't say the youth. It makes you sound old. Well, I, I, all right. Well, I, I, I'm in my thirties, <laughs> but people, people have the, obviously my thirties, people that are in their twenties, teens, they are more savvy than any of the generation, like because they they their whole lives have gotten these targeted ads. I mean, you figure someone that's like 20 years old has had high speed internet basically their entire life. They've seen targeted ads their entire life, so they can tell like when someone's just trying to sell them something. They're more savvy than any of the generation, so your content cannot be 
buy my book or the reviews are great buy my yeah. book or sponsored ad buy my book you have to especially if you're writing you have to kind of it goes to like the Gary Vaynerchuk had once said it, it, it's like boxing where, where you're gonna dab 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 them to the right hook like the right hook is mm. the sales pitch right like buy my book you can't go into a boxing fight and do the right hook right away. Yeah. You have to jab, 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 like put up interesting content people like. People fall in love with you. People get mostly invested in you, like, you know, in a sense. And then make the pitch after like a year or two of doing this when your book's done. Make that pitch because you got a year or two of goodwill and good karma built up to people. Um, I now, think um, your, your point about going. younger people is a good one. Because yeah. I think a lot of writers who are looking to use social media can look to what younger people are doing on social media, whether they're writers, whether they're creative people, or whether they're just sharing stuff for their friends. What are younger people doing that's maybe a little bit fresher than things than, you know, us in our 30s or 40s or, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s are doing? You know, how are young people using social media today is, I think, is a really important thing to look at. It is. I think it's also very intimidating, though, too like it can be it can we, be we, i mean i i know me and you have both been to like writers meetings basically where, where we get just general writers to discuss their writing and we've talked about social media with them they're all older than us right so when i say that i mean they're probably like you know and at least probably most of them are in their 50s social media to them is very very scary like the, the idea of going because they don't know basically what what younger generation what, what youth basically people that are using they don't know what, what they're into what, what to say how to act they don't, it doesn't quite quite. So it can be very, very intimidating for someone at, at the start. And I think the big thing for people that are trying to become writers that are, or writers that are trying to promote their work is find a way to kind of tiptoe and like ease your way into it, yes. kind of wade out into the water a bit. Um, and so you mentioned, obviously, Instagram, you mentioned Twitter, um, having probably a better ROI just for your time in terms of getting like converted to a book sale. How should someone start, do you think? Like, and, and this is actually good for me as well, because I have, like, my Instagram is like nothing. So, so like, how, uh, how would someone start, in a sense? So, first of all, I think just to start, the first step is signing up. You know, that's, yeah, the, that's the first yeah, step. I think yeah. that's a bit, that's a hurdle for a lot of people. It can seem like okay. this big, scary thing. Um, you know, just one, just sign up. And then two, find other things to look at. Find other things, you know, whether it's writing, whether it's authors, whether it's just things that you like on the um on the medium you know it's like you know on i'll follow a lot of movie people i'll follow old adventure game stuff you know i'll follow random famous people that i that i like you know or that i have clever things to say or to show or to post you know and so i'll do that and try and follow a variety of things to get an idea of what different people are doing on social media i think it's really easy to get caught into a tunnel of okay I'm working in this field, and so I'm only going to follow and look at what people in this field are doing. Right. I think that's a mistake. I think I think you should be looking at at a broader broader context. And so, familiarizing yourself with, you know, your social media outlet of choice, yeah. um, I think is a really good step. And um, and and three, not trying to do it all, not not okay. trying to do it all. You know, saying you know, I need a Facebook and an Instagram and a Twitter, and I'll get on TikTok too. You know, and so if that's too much, you know, choose one. Start with Instagram. I think Instagram is very, very easy yeah. um, to start with for a lot of people. Go from there. If you don't like Instagram, if it's not, you know, pictures aren't your thing, if you're not finding material to post, try Twitter. Go from there. You know, it's like some people don't like Twitter either. Maybe TikTok is for you, you know, or maybe you want to, you know, stick with what you know, go with Facebook. You know, I think there's there's something to be said about finding something that fits fits your groove. And then after that, I would say just experiment. You know, it's like think about think about the things that you want to see on social media and try and make some version of that. You know, because yeah. my rule of thumb is if something something's interesting to me, odds are it's going to be interesting to other people also. You know, so exactly. I'll try and replicate that. I like you said that too because the biggest thing I like, especially for me when I was starting my social media, even when I started my Instagram, um, was why like nothing i do is interesting right but like you take my computer all day i like what photos can i possibly take that are interesting you you have but, guitars behind you i think you do interesting I, stuff i think you yeah, do interesting I know, stuff. yeah i know yeah, yeah i know the strat back there in the west ball um but yeah absolutely so but just taking things that are not within your niche like like things that are not just writing like take photos of other things and anything that might be of any small interest you're absolutely right but like that that's going to get you the most <laughs> basically like, like the most kind of conversion or the most interactions 
Um, like even like, I mentioned that. I'm thinking back to mine now. I, I think the one I got the most likes. I think on my my page now was like there, there was the highlighter that that that, that said that said uh, it was like a high mark. Um, like the highlighter basically, and it wrote oh hi. Like it wrote oh, oh hi mark. mark. It says, oh hi mark. That's funny. Like in my head, I was like oh this it's is very funny. funny thing. You know, people love very the room. Niche, right? you know? Yeah, exactly right. But very niche, right? Not many people have seen the room. People get the reference set. So I think that just putting that on the on the like taking a quick photo. The other basically that got more than anything else. Just this weird idea that you wouldn't think is that funny happened to work. Um, but exactly right. So not being not being afraid to put just things that you might think that only you're interested in, like yep. the flowers outside your house. Take a photo. The the bird in that tree over there. That's interesting. You, you know what? The, if you're going for a walk and you see the you know river or or, or, or the the the, this, this, the cafe looks kind of interesting today. Take a quick photo of the, of the ambiance. I but I think a good rule of thumb is if you're interested in something, then you have yep. specialized knowledge about that thing. If I'm interested yep. in birds and bird watching, I'm going to know more about birds than most other people that I interact with, right? So if Very I look sure. in the trees and see birds, I'm going to know which birds are maybe special or interesting or unique. I'll be able to take better pictures. I'll be able to talk about those birds a little bit better. And yep. I can just craft a more interesting post just based on my knowledge basically right. versus maybe things that are more random or that I think other people want to see. Again, it's, I think it's very important to trust what you are naturally interested in. So I, I used to, I used to live in Japan. I was there for a long time. And so in Japan, I would take pictures of just random stuff I saw on the street, you know, signs, cool buildings, things that were maybe different, um, you know, than you would find in America, you know, um, people drying their clothes outside, or for example, you know, this vending machine looks very different, or like a newspaper vending machine, you don't see those in America anymore, you know, yeah. and so the idea that you, um, you know, you could see something, observe it, you know, um, I could tell people what it was, um, share my knowledge of Japanese culture, and just have that as something to post and share with people. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily the most relevant MFA thesis novel is not about Japan, you know, um, yeah. but there is there is that factor, okay, people can know me, and they can see something interesting based on what I'm posting, because of this, uh, because I'm able to, you know, generate something of value through social media. Exactly. And, and, that, and that, the, that ending thing you just made is correct in that you're you don't need to make a link between both. If you like bird yep. watching, you don't have to have, write a book about bird watching and tie that in. Your book can be, can be about a small town wrestling novel, right? It, it just happens to be these are two different aspects of your personality. People want to see yes. you. You are the product. Like your personality is, yes. what, is what people want to see. They don't. It's it's and, and this is part of something that 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 really is paradoxical to me and, and wigs me out because no other product mm. for the most part is like this, maybe, but. No one cares about your book, right? In the sense of when I go into media, I care about you, yeah. you the person first. Like your book's separate. I, I, yeah. if I like you as a person, I'm going to maybe buy your book and hopefully I'll be entertained and enjoy it. But I am not following you initially because of, of your book and what you're writing about. Yes. It's because I am falling in love or, or I, I, am, I find the person that you are to be an interesting person that I want to follow, right? I want to follow, you know, yes. I want to see more of your posts. And being very earnest and very honest and showing more than just the writer side is probably what's going to get people initially. Because if you are someone that likes bird watching, hey, great, now I'll come in there, right? I, I, I've spoken about my, my, my chess hobby, right? If, if, if I play some chess tournament, right? I take some photos of, of the game or video basically playing, right? That becomes more and more interesting, even though it has nothing to do with my writing at all. It just clearly is more of a human being. It's like everybody else, like a date, you know, just, I'm, I'm a somebody like anybody else. Yes. And then hopefully that turns into maybe some sort of conversion down the line. I, I think the way a lot of internet content works, and I hate that stupid word content, you know, know, it's such it's, a catch all it's, for different it's, types of yeah. types of art, but the way a lot of stuff on the internet works is that the vast majority of it is free and people, you know, they want to, you know, pull, pull up their phone and, you know, find something and find stuff right. to read, listen to, watch, play, e experience on there mm -hmm. and get this material for free. And then over time, over the, uh, over, you know, however long of doing that, they become familiar with the people and with that material themselves. And they get to know it a little bit better. You know, they're, they're using this for free. And then maybe there's a point where like, oh, okay, I'm interested in this person or you know this youtuber or this musician or this gamer oh now they are coming out with something else 
that is, you know, it's paid, whether it's a book or it's a, you know, a video, a movie download, or it's, um, you know, it's an album or something else, you know, you like their material, you're used to them, you want to support them. And so it's this idea, oh, of course, I will then contribute money towards this, because it feels like you're already in that groove and familiar with this, as opposed to who's this stranger and, you know, why does he want me to buy his book? You know, I think that using the internet as that kind of inroad is something that any creative person can do when it comes to making someone familiar with you and you and what you have to say and what you have to put out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I guess to summarize that, like the main thing is just being authentic and being you and not just focusing on the writing, like focusing on different yes. aspects of you. Uh, and, and because the more the more of a, of a human being you seem, the more people are going to want to just yes. follow because they happen to find that you're interesting. Um, and, and, and don't and don't get yeah. me wrong, we've kind of been talking about just you know, using different hobbies or aspects of yourselves. I think if you can tie your social media or your web presence into your book somehow, that's yeah. a good thing. That that really, really is. And I do um, but not yes. every writer in your world, you know, it's like, you know, it's, and I, I do post thing, you know, my book's about academia. So I'll post, you know, academic type things or, you know, about the, about the Midwest or, you know, the, the sort of business of creative writing, um, because that's a natural tie in. I think if you can find things like that to do with your book, Mm -hmm. um, as a writer, I think that can make a very strong connection. Not every writer will have that or be able to do that all the time, but if you can, I think that is very good and very powerful. Absolutely, yeah. If you could do it, I completely agree. The, the reason why I was mentioning that though is because, for let's be real, for a fiction, right? Not a lot of fiction necessarily ties into what you do. Like people that, especially genre, right? People that write fantasy, sci-fi, right? There's no, yeah. there's no alien planet. You know what I mean? But like in the real world, there's no, there's no mystical horses that are, you know, or wizards coming in. <laughs> Um, but, you know, I'm saying because like when I, when you, what, a lot of the advice when you first started basically was, was, was to come up with a, a platform, right? Yeah. But when they're talking about, but that's, that's for nonfiction basically. When someone says come up with a platform, right? Like, like, um, your platform is, is, um, what, what, whatever social cause you might want it to be, you know, mm -hmm. um, God, we, did, we, we had a mass shooting, right? So, so like, um, you know, increase gun, um, Gun awareness of right? gun yeah gun, gun, gun violence, control like, yeah that, that's your platform that's great if you're gonna write a book now about maybe, maybe about a mass shooting maybe about a shooting coming together after a mass shooting if you're gonna write a book about or, or just nonfiction, basically one maybe doing analysis psychological analysis of this right works great but that doesn't necessarily work if your story is going to be but if you're writing you know a fiction story right you, again like the sci-fi right so, so something has no necessarily no real world context or no context to what you do I think a lot of people get very discouraged because they can't find a way to tie it in. So if you can tie it in, great. But if not, focusing on content that just makes you seem more of an individual, makes you just seem like more of an interesting person is what you want to go with instead. And, and you make an interesting point too in the idea of, you know, you mentioned this idea of um, posting about a cause or making yeah. your feelings about a cause known. I think um, a lot of writers will do that with uh, political ideals they that they yeah. believe in. You know, um, I think that works best when it's very focused and consistent and done over a period of time and not just, mm -hmm. you know, the latest thing is to support this. So I'm going to tweet about that. I think that can be, you know, a little bit hokey sometimes. Um, you see a lot of that on Twitter where there's a lot of, you know, political conversations of, of every kind. I think that can get oversaturated if done poorly or if you do it in argumentative or in a negative kind of way. But I think if done well, supporting a political cause consistently and thoughtfully in a way that feels really real and genuine, I think people resonate with that. I think that I think people appreciate that. I think you're right. No, and that often is, if you're going to do Twitter, I mean, to be frank, that, that often is, is one of the, the, the trending topics on Twitter are usually something, something political. So, so if you have something political you want to say, some viewpoint you want to have, that you have, that you can articulate well in 140 characters, whatever it is, then yeah, do that because that, that's, that's quite literally, like that's, that's going to get you some sort of traction, basically. That's like, yeah, so not being, not being afraid of touching on certain subjects that a little bit touchy can be very, very good if, if you're able to be very concise and very thought out with your answers. Part of the reason why I don't have a Twitter anymore is because I, in 140 characters, I, I don't know how to 
make my position concise without without my views being misrepresented. So I could not. And also, like, like every every hour of the day, being on, like, you have to be on there so frequently. For me, I couldn't do it. But you, you, you um, yeah. yeah, I think that's that's one way to do it. I think um, a lot of the social media is really good now with advanced postings. You know, the yes. idea that you can write out all your tweets for the week. You know, on on one of these programs and then schedule them. Yeah. Um, I know, especially with Twitter, a lot of a lot of people will use will use that. Um, but you bring up another point too, in that you know sometimes you know politics is very complicated and social issues are very, very complicated and it's not always conducive to, you know, a single tweet, you know, and yeah. that, um, and I think a lot of things that are boiled down to, con to a single tweet can be very, um, very oversimplified. You know, sometimes there's just knocking the other side, you know, or putting something down. It's a lot e easier to be negative on Twitter, you mm -hmm. know, in that shorter format than it is to explore a bigger idea. And so when I talk about the social media, political social media posts that aren't interesting to me, they're the ones that are repeating a very basic idea or, you know, just slandering the other side. And that I think has very limited kinds of value. It does. Yeah, absolutely right. The other thing too is I mean, you do also, and it's not, you need to have a certain level of like wit, basically, I think as well, probably seems like either have wit or like really clever mm -hmm. and like on the spot too. Like, 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 like if you're the kind of person that can come up with a comeback really quickly or come up with a response, something very quickly, this could be very helpful. If you're someone basically that, that, that needs to take time to like process a response to certain things, right? Like, you know, it, it's not, Twitter, Twitter works so fast, it's not always the best yeah. for that either. Um, so, so you have to kind of find what kind of person you are, but definitely being willing to go in that direction, don't shy away from that. Like, and controversy, in all honesty, tends to work out in favor of the person that more often than not, like the press you get and the procedures you get basically on, you know, from, from making things that maybe might go against the grain, you're going to probably win out because you're going to, with especially with Twitter, every single pocket of, of politics and worldviews are on there. So if, if the 90% of people disagree with you, that 10% is going to be very fervently loyal to your, to your position there. And you're going to get some traction that way. So you, you can't, controversy can be leveraged pretty well in that sense. Um, again, no, the, starting out though, I don't know how well, like with no, like with no, like if you fall, this, this is, this is kind of down the line basically when you get a bit of a presence on there, I guess. Um, well, you make yeah. a, you make a good point in that I think there is a lot to be done with politics on social media. And I honestly don't, you know, just because writing about politics or political issues is not interesting to me. Mm -hmm. If something, if I feel very significantly about an issue, you know, sometimes yeah. I will weigh in, but this is, this is very rare. I think I mostly have other things that I want to be reflecting on and thinking about and sharing with people. Any mm -hmm. idea that I have, usually somebody else can say it better. So I usually let them, um, let, let them do the work. Um, and also it's, it's kind of just not where my mind goes, you know, mm -hmm. it's, um, I, I think that, you know, especially after, you know, a rough four years of the Trump presidency, you know, I personally feel very oversaturated by politics and after, um, you know, after that really wanted to step away and not engage with that as much as I was, especially on social media. Um, so I have been, you know, especially since, again, especially since the Trump presidency, my posting about politics has gone down. A lot of good has come from that because, again, I've been able to focus on other things with my social media. Absolutely. And if you're someone that cannot, I guess the last point I guess to make for that is like, if you're the kind of person that can't let something go. But, but like, if you get a fight, if you get an argument with someone on Twitter, right? And that, and that sticks in your head and that's rattling around in your head for the rest of the day, that's going to affect your brain. That's going to affect your yeah. life. That, that, social media should be fun. Like, to me, social yeah. media should be, it's a tool, but it, like, like, even though it's, it's, it's a tool for marketing, you should be enjoying it, right? Like, like, like if I wasn't getting a joy out of doing these videos, I would never be doing it. Like, there's a certain joy to it. It doesn't yeah. necessarily feel like a job in, in, a, in a great sense. Same thing with that. Like if you're going on there and making these posts and all that, and, and like like the 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 arguments you get in there, the blowback, whatever it is, it's getting too much. Stop doing it. Switch to something yeah. else. It's not worth the 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 kind of the, the anguish and the torment and all that stuff. Basically, just to just just to be doing what you think is a good marketing practice. I, I I agree with that. It's there's a lot of toxic behavior on social media just by its very very nature. Yeah. I think we've, we're seeing more of that in recent years, and I think people are becoming a little bit more aware. The toxic behavior is still there, but I think people are becoming more, more aware of it. And I think the best thing you can do as a writer or any creative person 
looking to build a solid, responsible platform is to not engage with that kind of toxic behavior, is to just ignore it, don't feed the trolls, don't look at the comments, you know, don't weigh in, don't get sucked into these arguments, you know, mm -hmm. um, don't see your social media as being about that, you know, as right. I, I think about the, um, I think about the people I really respect on social media who don't do that. They just don't do it, you know. You yeah. don't you don't you don't see that from professionals. And then I look at, you know, people on social media who have a pretty big platform who are bullies or name callers or who will do that kind of slander and it looks very immature. It really really does. I don't like yeah. seeing that. <clears throat> Absolutely, you're exactly right. I mean, yeah, I, that, that, that's the whole thing. It, it is like you'll if you're the kind of person that, that can pretty much see that and not like if if you want if you want your work to be viewed in a way that is ties ties back in the book. If you want your work to be viewed as is very mature, very thought out. Like you want to be viewed as a very you know well thought out author, right? You can't be doing that. Like you can't be the guy. Yes on there making these immature things and all of a sudden expect people when the time your book comes out to take your book seriously right to take to take no matter how good your work is it, it, there's going to be a connotation there you have to be a sort of professional in a sense if you want your work to be viewed as professional as well when that comes around um, 